hello guys welcome to sovereign solutions your number one channel where you get solutions to all your sovereign problems it's nine having you in class again today how have you been we are going to look at something very important um, a core component of gis and um, geodesy and um, related fields we are going to look at um, um an overview or we are going to yes have an overview of a um, coordinate reference system yeah coordinate reference system you know most times when you're working on your on your qgs or maybe when you're working with any other js package you always yeah maybe okay make sure you know the coordinate reference system if it's projected or if it's geographic or maybe you know there are so many information or there are so many uh, there are so many so many things are hinged let's use that so many things are hinged on the coordinate reference system whenever you're working on or maybe whenever you're working on working with qgs or maybe working with gis generally so we are going to use qgs as an example or yeah we are going to use qgs as a case study to look at some things now um I'm actually reading out from their documentation. Now, the first thing is that um, overview. We cannot talk about um, CRS, that's a um, coordinate reference system, without talking about map projections. We can't talk about um, the coordinate reference system without talking about um, map projections. Because when I say the coordinate reference system is um, what is being used in the projection. Because you are moving something, you are moving, yeah, let's say something. You're moving something that is on 3D to, you are presenting, yeah, you are presenting a 3D object on a 2D surface, something like that. So that's just the idea or that's just the premise, if I'm not saying it wrongly. That's just the premise behind the map projection. So map projections try to portray the surface of the earth or a portion of the earth on a flat piece of paper. Or computer screen just like um, you are going to see some information on your screen very soon so we are going to import a vector layer good so we've actually imported um, a particular vector layer this is um, the shape file of the the capital city of Nigeria that's um, FCT boundary remember we were trying to talk to you about the map projection on how you portray um, the surface of the earth or a portion of the earth on a flat piece of paper or computer screen. Now, this is actually a portion of the earth, yeah, because it's not the whole earth, a portion of the earth, the capital city of Nigeria being displayed on the screen, right? Good. So now we are trying to show you how this 3D portion of the earth is being displayed as 2D on your screen. So that's just as it's been said in layman's term, map projection is trying to transform the earth from its spherical shape in 3D to a planar shape 2D, as you can see on your screen. Are we together? Good. So this is actually a core. Yeah, it's actually a core in um, Judeci and um, you know GIS actually um, as a um, its root in Judeci, and if we are talking about um, coordinate reference system and we don't start with um, the map projection, then we have actually not done justice to where we are coming from. So I I am going to leave the link to the full article on the description section of this particular video, where you can go there and then you can see for yourself um, exhaustively how some of these things or most of these things work now we are going to have a base map on which we would have this our what our vector data right good so that's layer data source manager browser and then open street map right good now let's close this window and then let's bring this down a bit Let's zoom to layer. Good, it's fair enough. Now, what this simply means is that
so just to make it uh, more legible for the for perception for us to see it's fair enough right now this is the boundary superimposed on open street map right it's actually open because you can access it uh, free of charge now what we are trying to explain to you is that this particular vector data you can see on your screen it might be any other vector data but this is actually a shape file so this particular vector data you can see on your screen has a coordinate reference system attached to it how do you locate or how do you identify the coordinate reference system attached to it you come to the layer you go to properties right then information now under the information you see a very big um, very big heading for it because it's actually very very important coordinate reference system now this is the name the unit what geographic latitude and the longitude of coordinates the method lat and long celestial body head and then based on wgs84 and some other important um, information about the crs now what this simply means is that this shape file we are working on is having what the geographic coordinate reference system by geographic coordinate reference system it simply means that it covers or it sees the portion of the earth in a, in the globe not related or not specific to the particular region now if i should um, read out from what we have on the documentation here good now the use of the graphic coordinate reference system is very common. They use degrees of latitude and longitude and sometimes also a height, height value to describe the location on the earth's surface. The most popular is called WGS84, which is what you can see here, World Geodetic System 1984. That's the full meaning of WGS84. Now lines of latitude run parallel to the equator and divide the earth into 180 equal 180 equal space section from north to south and some other stuff now at the equator and only at the equator the distance represented by one of the line of longitude is equal to the distance so all of these are what all of these are well described in the article then we also have the projected coordinate reference system now the projected co coordinate reference system is what we are going to show to you how you can get from your what from your geographic coordinate reference system now before we get there there is this particular tool here on your status bar. There is this particular tool here, the, the current CRS. By the time you hover your mouse around the um, EPSG 4326, you'll see current CRS. Now, what that current CRS simply means is that this particular workspace you're working on, this map canvas, has a particular CRS. The layer you're trying to bring in also has its own CRS. Now, when you're working on the geographic coordinate reference system, most times it's not easy for you to carry out some operations. Some of the operations are, let's say, operations like um, you want to know um, linear measurement. For instance, you want to carry out a buffer, or maybe you want to create grids, like um, generally you want to create grids. Because the, ge the geographic is not having its units in meter, most times it's very difficult. We are going to give you an example as we proceed in the video. So that's why sometimes it's advisable that you move it from the geographic to the projected. The projected actually defines that portion of the earth better than the geographic. Because there is a particular concept in the geodesy, I think is it a geocentric and um, regional. So when you talk about the, the geodetic, the geographic and the projected it's actually the two main coordinate reference system that is being used in what in gis right good so now we have told you that the layer you import or maybe the layer you're working on has its own crs which we have shown to you then the map canvas or let's say the the workspace you're working on also has its own what crs which you can see at this point so let's say you want to move from one coordinate reference system to another how do you go about it you come to the layer you're working on you right click and then you come to what export now under the export you are going to see a particular feature which would define 
the next what coordinate reference system you want to use for that particular layer so now under export let's go to what save features as good now we have them um, save vector layer as right now that's the window we are working on maybe that's the window that is up the ideal is that we still leave it as what an s3 shape file right then we give it a name So on the on the folder we are working on understanding um, CRS in QGIS, let's just call this um, test. Let's just call this test and we say save. Now this is where the crux comes in. This is the crux of the video, the CRS. This is where we want to explain everything or most of the things we want to talk about in this particular aspect of the video. So you click on that icon. We have what the coordinate reference system selector. This place is actually very important. Now, when we started, we told you that uh, we have the geographic and the projected, right? So we are going to go to good now. Good. You see now, this is the geographic and this is the projected. By the geographic, we were told according to the documentation we are working with that um, WGS84 is widely adopted. Let's use that. It's a widely adopted um, geographic coordinate reference system. And if you want to use the projected coordinate reference system, then you now try to select which of the projections you are on the globe, right? So if you are using UTM, actually, I think the globe is divided into, I think, 60 zones or so. So depending on the location you are on the globe, that is where you can, maybe we are going to make a video on um, UTM zones very soon, where I will be. also have a file we are going to share with you on that video that you can locate which zone you are at what maybe at any given point in time right good so there are different zones if you're using the utm and then you can actually know which of the zones you are so that is that is another example of it that's one major example of the projected coordinate reference system but for the geographic coordinate reference system then the widely used or let's say the most used or yeah the most commonly used is what the wgs84 that's um, the geographic coordinate system. So now let's say you want to move. Remember what we want to do was is that um, we wanted to um, change or wanted to transform or wanted to export this our FCT boundary, which can be any boundary, which can be any file you have with you from the geographic towards to the projected. So let's assume that when you started, you can see there are different columns here. This is for the recently used because maybe we've been using it. So let's say yours is very empty. There is nothing here, but definitely you are going to see something under the predefined coordinate reference system because that's actually how it is being built. So the recently used is how frequent you use the um, this particular um, coordinate reference system selector and those coordinate reference system that you've been using, right? So that's why you can see so many of them here on our own on our own QGIS. So now let's say you are using this and um, you have not gotten so much here and just have your predefined. So what do you do? Since we already know that WGS84 is our base um, coordinate reference system and we want to project it, we want to move it, we want to transform it to let's say um, the projected coordinate reference system, what do we do? We can just come maybe if all of these things the drop down if they are not well arranged we can just click on the drop down to sort everything together so we know that anytime we click on this we are referring to the geographic and when we click on this we are referring to what the projected right good so now we now come under projected and we can decide to select you know use we can decide to select scroll through or we come to this um, filter now when you come to this filter you can just type wgs as you're typing it will be saving as you're typing it will be what it will be saving itself under your predefined coordinate reference system so let's say we have wgs is that wgs wgs then we have what 84 right we have 84 so you can see now that as we type wgs 84 under the filter we can only see, or let's say the WGS84 has been sieved out for us. So we can now decide to move on to what UTM. UTM. Are we together? Let's say UTM. Good. You now see the different what WGS84 UTM coordinate reference system that I have. Now, what zone are we working on? I guess we are working on 32. So now you can now see 
wgs 84 slash utm zone 32 so you just click on it now when you click on it you can read the properties of that particular word for the reference system you want to use right so the properties you can see the unit is what meters um relies on that one, which is not um, plate fixed and maybe some other things you can see here the method is what universal traverse marker which is actually one very important um but i say it's actually core in the projected coordinate reference system let's just use that it's very important in projected coordinate reference system so when you have been able to identify the projected coordinate reference system you want to move your geographic coordinate reference system to which we've just done like this or we've just done now just click on what's okay you now see that it has been moved from the wgs 84 which it was earlier towards wgs 84 slash utm zone 32 so now this alonia shows that we are actually moving it from the geographic to the what to the projected we are moving it from what the geographic to what to the projected so when you've done that the next thing you're going to do is to just click on what okay when you click on okay the process will just start good you can see and successful now it has been exported to a particular um, directory we have actually indicated earlier which is this now this is the test so we can just right click go to property good now let's look at the CRS. The CRS does a color reference system. You can see the name, zone 32, and then you can see the unit. You can also see that um, we have what UTM, and you know UTM is actually the core of the um, the projected color reference system, right? Good. So now this is actually, let's say, the basics, or as it has been even stated in one of the documentaries there, let's use, let's borrow their word. In a layman term, this is how you can just do or let's say convert or move from um, the geographic to the projected now we talked about a particular application let's say you want to have a um, grid let's um, close this particular layer let's say you are working on this they are actually on the same spot you know they're actually on the same spot because they are actually the same but there's something we are going to show to you again because there are so many things that are on the video that you are going to benefit from now they are on the same spot even though they are not on the same projection system right they are still on the same spot now let's now come to that um, example we want to give to you vector research tool and then create grid now under vector you go to vector the research tool create grid now there's something we want to show to you there Good. Now, under this particular um, create grid, you can see the description, or let's say how the particular tool works. This algorithm creates a vector layer with a grid covering a given extent. Elements on the grid can be point line, and as the case is. Now, you can see that there is an error sign here showing that distance is in geographic degrees. Consider reprojecting to a projected local coordinate system for accurate results. Now, why is it, why are we unable to move it? We are unable to move it because as it has been stated like this, it is on a geographic degrees. And as we, sta as we stated earlier, when you have your, your CRS in lat and long, it's not always easy for you to have a um, linear measurement. Let's say you want to have um, maybe buffer, maybe you want to know at a given point, what are other surrounding features around it, maybe topology or some other stuff as we used to do in GIS. Now, you cannot really do that because with that um, geographic system, you can't easily measure distances as you can see from the error message that is coming up, which means as it has been suggested, we should reproject toward a projected local. Now, that local there is actually there for a reason. The local, the projected and the local, they are synonymous because when you project it to that local system, then you are now bringing it to your own base. By the time you, maybe when you take your um, UDC class, you would understand most of these things we are trying to extract and you know, explain on the video, right? Good. So, 
when you reproject it you are now referring to your own locality no longer you're no longer referring to the world geodetic or maybe yeah, the world geodetic system you're now referring to your own zone on the world geodetic system so you are now working on your own area which is actually very very important so how then do we now overcome this challenge the, the only way we can overcome this challenge is when we change the, the projection system of this our uh, map canvas because even if we come to you know the first thing we the first um, layer we went to was what this is our FCT boundary I remember that our FCT boundary is in um, geodetic right good now let's still come to geographic radar let's still come to this our um, test which we have reprojected let's see if it will allow us to do what we want to create create we still have that error message that we need to reproject. What it simply means is that at this point, it's no longer about the layer. It is about the map canvas. That means the environment you are working on, which means when your layer, there are some tools that you want to use on your GIS environment with emphasis on QGIS, that even if your layer has been reprojected and your work environment as your map canvas, which is this particular screen you're seeing here, is not projected to that coordinate reference system, you will still have some limitations. So that now takes us back to this one under our, what do you call this again, under our status bar, it takes us back to what the current CRS. So you just click on it. Good. Now, when you click on it, it's still like um, the coordinate reference system selector we saw earlier, but this is more advanced, or let's say, should we call it more advanced? This um, deals with the whole project. This deals with the whole project, not a particular layer of the project. So whatever you change here, you are actually changing it regarding, or let's say, and it will affect the project. So that's just how it is. So now, if you don't want any CRS, you can just click on this, no CRS. So you're just working on it like a maybe normal card. Because I remember that there was a distinction between them. There was one distinction um, I gave in school some time ago that um, the card and um, GIS, most times you can work on CAD without doing whatever CRS you're working on. But when you want to work on JS, you should know the CRS you're working on because it's actually very, very important, right? So we don't want it to be under no CRS. We want it to be on a CRS. Now, the project coordinate reference that we want to use, the first one that we have there is the projected, which is the is the geographic radar, which is the WJS84. But we want to reproject it as we have seen from that um, error message so remember how the projected we used the other time was what wgs84 slash utm zone 32 right so we can just click on it when we click on this we can still see the different properties just as if you click on wgs84 you can see now let's use this um let's use this image as uh, a guide when it's on wgs84 you can see the extent that has been covered right now let's come back to this you now see the extent that has been covered which means when you are on WGS84, you are actually covering a very large area and referring to where you are. But when you now reproject it to the projected coordinate reference system, you are referring to where you are. When you are now working on the projected, you can now see how tiny your area of interest is, right? Good. So that's the advantage of reprojecting it. It affects your accuracy a lot. It increases your accuracy. Let it affect your accuracy positively, so it increases your accuracy. So now let's use what the WGS84 slash UTM zone 32. We just um, apply and we say okay. Now remember the zone 32 we are using is because of the location we are, or maybe it's because of where we want to work on, right? So depending on wherever you are, we are going to make a video on how you can select, maybe how you can identify the zone you are working on. And there's a file that we are going to share with you on that video so that you can have it on your mobile device because we're even going to use our mobile device for that particular video. So you will see how to locate whatever zone you are at what point in time. So we are actually on 32. That's why we're using 32. So maybe when you're watching the video, you've can, you can worked on different zones. So maybe if you're working on 43, if you're working on 31, if you're working on 47, depending on the zone you're working on, right? Good. So you can actually shoot that. And if you are not even using WGS84, we are using our local datum here, which is MENA. So you can also use any datum you have. But the, the most important thing is that know which of them you are working on. Is it the geographic or the projected? So that you don't make a mistake when you are trying to reproject, right? Good. 
So we've actually applied that um, we are working on the 32, right? Apply and then what? Okay. Now, you can even see, good, we, we failed to show to you, but you can go back and check. When it was on the geographic, the coordinates here were in lat and long, 7.9 something and I think 8.9 something. But when we have as we have reprojected, you can see the current map coordinate, which were in latitude and longitude, are now in what eastern and northern. Are we together? So this is another key note you need to pay attention to when you are talking about what the map projection or maybe understanding your coordinate reference system. So now let's go back to that our grid, which is a wonder vector, and then I think under research to write good. You now see that that error message that was there has been eliminated and it was eliminated because the project crs we are working on or the project crs that has been set is projected and as it's been projected the units of that projection are linear so we can have it in meters kilometers feet miles and yards right so let's say because of the extent let's just use kilometers and then let's make this 100 i don't know um, then Let's also come to kilometers here and let's make this uh, let's make this 250. I don't know. Then the extent, the grid extent, that means what are we trying to grid? We are gridding our FCT, our FC. Let's now use the projected as well so that we don't run into any mistake. We are using the projected, which is what um, the test we projected, right? Good. And then the grid CRS is this. So let's run and see the output on the screen there okay the um, 100 and 250 were too big so we couldn't um, see our grids being displayed so let's reduce this to let's say 50 and 25 and let's change this to line instead of points and then let's rerun and see good 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 not too good let's still change our parameters but the idea is that the point we are trying to make on this section of the video is that when you have your project CRS set on the geographic, you will find it not so easy to carry out some tasks. But immediately you change it to the projected, then it becomes easier for you to do it. It becomes easier for you to do it to carry out some tasks as we are doing right now. So this is another major application. So maybe when you want to carry out some buffer with your QGIS and you also have your um, your layer in a geographic coordinate reference system, it's advisable you reproject it to what to the um, projected coordinate reference system, which will make it easier for let's close this one, which will make it easier for you to do what. Let's close some of these ones. I think this is better, right? Good. So we should make it easier for you to carry out your analysis without them um, running into any challenge whatsoever right good so we believe that um, this video was um, um, exhaustive enough we believe you have been able to get a few things coupled with what we are what you're going to read from that um, blog post um, according to the qgs documentation the link to that um, particular um, documentation will be on the description section of this video so you can assess it and then you read it alongside them um, watching this video there are different segments we have a map projection with them um, angular conformity and then you know, there are different segments of that video which you are going to read that will help you also appreciate what you've actually watched on this one on this video so we are going to pause at this point we are going to stop at this point and then maybe when there are any other updates regarding this topic we can always um, share it with you. So we hope we've provided a um, solution to this particular solving problem. If you have any question, you have any contribution, you can reach out to us on the comment section or you can send us a mail or you contact us using any of um, our social media platform and we are going to get back to you as soon as possible. So until we see you on our next video, ensure you keep being a good um, geodesist here. Because um, I have so much um, affinity here. Yeah, I so love you. They see you um, keep being a good geodesist, you keep being a good MGS expert, being a good um, surveyor, and be good at whatever you're doing. And then um, we are going to see you on our next video. Have a nice time.
Bye.